Welcome back, All Sports. Mike Robitaille, the legend Mike Robitaille with us here <laughs> in studio. And Mike, let's talk about some of the young players because, you know, looking ahead to the draft, but they last year they had a number one pick, a high pick, Reinhardt, uh, playing in the junior, junior worlds. Um, and they've got some great young defensemen. Well, they do, and the defensemen uh, stuck, and they're staying here, and I really like Zadorov, um, not a little. I, I like him a lot, and I think he has a great future along with Ristolainen. And I think Pesic, you can fit in there. There's probably eventually your top three or four uh, for this team for a long time. And so, once again, the question is, how much do they grow? How, how good do they get? Right now, it's not good enough. They have to continue to get better. Reinhardt, um, I like his effort, even though he went back, and I, I think... You take a look at his overall game when he came in, I think they expected a little more this year, and I was kind of hoping somehow he would stick around and get that experience. Uh, even playing eight or ten minutes a night in the National Hockey League, even if it wasn't much, I thought that would make him into a much better player. But he parlayed that little bit of experience uh, that he did have up here, and he went back to junior hockey, and he's just... Uh, doing whatever he wants down there, and he's uh, almost like playing for fun. He's that much better. It's an interesting situation. You, you, get a, uh, you get a little taste of the big time, and then you go back. Oh, it's yeah. so much easier. It's unbelievable how slow it's like, like the game is being played in slow motion. So I can imagine for him, after playing an NHL game, going back to junior, it's yeah, uh, you know, night and day. When, when I want to do it and how many times do I want to do it. Uh, when you walked in, we were talking about the fact that you're apparently the subject, uh, one of the subjects of a new book that will be coming out. There is. There, there, as a matter of fact, uh, if you remember uh, Brian McFarlane, who was on NBC and Hockey Night in Canada for uh, many, many years, he's put together a book of about, I think, six, seven, eight uh, past players uh, who he felt might have been an interesting uh, story to tell. And uh, so that's kind of what we're work working on right now. So. Goes right, uh, goes right back to when I was playing through suing the National Hockey League and having to do it, and then what happens after, and how do you get back on your feet, and so on. It's a, it's a tale of woes. <laughs> I'll be but out uh, there uh, it's an interesting. It's a, it'll be a really an interesting book. And he's covered an awful lot in it, so uh, I'm looking forward to see it myself. Well, you've had you know uh, a couple different jobs in the NHL. I mean, you were a player, you were a color analyst, and then for the Empire Sports Network, you were the host of the, uh, the post-game uh, show, the, you know, uh, one of the top shows of all time in the NHL Hockey Hotline on the Empire Sports Network. And January is, ironically, the 10-year anniversary of the closing of the Empire Sports Network, more or less. Um, but those were some great years for you, and you know, you're on with Brian Blessing, you're on with Josh Mora. Uh, right after the game, people yeah. could call live, and it was live television. Nobody knew, with no tape delay, I should add, no. uh, anything could happen. And everything did happen. Maybe that's what made it so good. Yeah. And um, for a long time, I used to be able to have the, the phone right there at the beginning, and I'd control right. you know, what was going on. And uh, well, you know, when I think back, I mean, Listen, for my career, it was, it was best to be probably working the NHL games with the NHL team. But the most fun I ever had, uh, certainly by far, was uh, when I was over at Empire. And I, uh, and I still, that hockey hotline, for some reason or other, I, it's just like uh, it's left an imprint in a lot of people's minds. I, I get approached about it so many times. And uh, I had nothing but laughs. I, I mean... Bob, I laughed so hard some nights. Honest to God, I, I thought I was going to choke myself to death. And uh, that, that show was nothing but fun. Well, the show for those... It's, you had a lot of freedom, you know? You well, could kind of be and yourself. And this is kind and, of inside baseball stuff, but that yeah. show maintained over half the audience from the game, which is yeah. unheard of. Uh, and the league office in Toronto... I mean, think about that. Half. Right. It was, it was because it was an entertaining show, and people wanted yeah. to hear what you had to say and express their their opinions, but the league office in Toronto would monitor the show and at once, at one time, called in the show. I remember uh, you were on with Brian and... Uh, Campbell. Yeah, Campbell called the show to cor correct something that he thought you guys talked about and you had a little mini debate on the air. I remember, uh, I, oh, and I remember uh, Matthew Burnaby and his contract and uh, something was going on there. He wouldn't sign. He was on his way home. He was on his, in his car or something going up to Kingston, and he called in, and he was pleading his case, and we were trying to plead his case, and we're, oh, we used to, we, we, everything was just wide open, and it was, 
It was just from night to night. It was, you had so much freedom. But it's uh, like everything else. Things uh, change. Well, sometimes they change dramatically. I, I sometimes can, they don't. I can tell this tale a little bit now. The show was not the favorite of uh, the Knox ownership, and it was not the favorite of the Galisano ownership. But John Regas loved the show. It was, in fact, the show was his idea. Yeah, I, uh, I remember, you know, of course, that was I, we'd talk with him once a year. It seemed like uh, always before the season started, we'd have a little meeting and by phone, and it was always saying, don't change anything, just keep on going. I'll have Darcy take care of them down in the dressing room. And uh, I'm enjoying the game. My wife is enjoying the game. And uh, don't change a thing. So we, <laughs> we had that support. I, it was a pretty tough pill yeah. to swallow, though, I would think, some nights. Because uh, I, I think there were a few times maybe we went over the top. But that's what no, made it even better. I can't, I can't imagine you ever going over the top. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Buffalo Sabres, the future of this franchise, they've obviously got solid ownership. They've got yeah. a tremendous facility. Um, in my opinion, I think they've got the right coach for this team. How long will the fans be patient enough to, for them to start returning to the playoffs and making a serious run for a championship? Well, uh, it's all predicated upon the, the general manager and what he does and what players he brings in. I mean, if he brings the wrong players in, I mean, you're going to be right where you are. And I'm just going to go back to reiterate and say that I, I think Tim's biggest job will be to insulate these young hockey players. So somehow he has to find three or four, not old veterans. I don't buy into these old veteran guys, right? I'm talking about guys who are maybe 26. They've been around for four or five years with a lot of character. Now you, you cover these young players a little bit. They feel a lot more comfortable. And that will be his biggest job. To take the high draft choice, it's pretty obvious who that is and who the first three or four are. And that's pretty well where they're going to stand. So, but I think, the, I think when it's all said and done, I think you're talking about maybe three years yeah you think in two, three years two they can make three. a serious run well i i don't i possibly i mean i i'm here telling you how great i think the door off and right. ritz is well that doesn't mean anything it means that i'm here saying this and that's all it means uh where they end up i have no idea that's that's up to them how good they want to be and the young players that come in how good are they going to be? And that will be the story. Well, if your opinion didn't mean anything, I wouldn't have you on the show. So uh -huh. I respect your opinion and your 75 years of Thank hockey you. experience, <laughs> which, which goes back to before they even had ice, I think. I, I think you started your career before ice. Actually, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was good. It was tough skating, that cement. <laughs> well, but it built character. Some people suggested I skated like I was skating in cement. <laughs> but they might have been talking about my head. Mike, it's always great. It's have a great new you. year with your family and your grandkids. Well, Kids and we'll, we'll have you back on very soon. Good. Always good talking hockey, Bob. I'm good seeing you too. Good. Right. Best wishes right, to Michael. everyone in the new year. We'll take a break. We'll wrap up All Sports Western New York right after this.